Well, hello everyone. It's Ellen here and it's Monday. So it's mini Monday madness. We are painting uh, ink and wash again. Uh, some forest elements. You got some mushrooms and some acorns. I go over things step by step, even how to draw them. But if you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceable. Um, you know, we're just going to be doing a simple, look at my fingers, see, they have ink on them. I'm a real artist. I paint. <laughs> Anyway, uh, please hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, and again, with the Patreon, you have a traceable. Uh, what Patreon is, is a place people go to support my channel. I have traceables, reference photos, ad-free videos, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays, and a live stream once a month in the top tier with a download from me. So you just go check it out, out here. Boop. And uh, you can see what that's all about. So without further ado, let's get painting. Okay, for this uh, exercise, for our mini Monday, of course, I'm doing my mini pieces of paper, which is a three inch square of 100% cotton cold pressed paper from Arsh. I'll be using the Princeton four and six long round brush, maybe not the four, I don't know. I'm gonna start with the six only. Um, I've got my Sharpie fine point pen and I'll be using the nib with like the pen ink, I mean, excuse me, the, the fountain ink. Um, if you, like I said, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceable. If not, like basically I'm just going to show you as I'm drawing, you know, how we draw the mushrooms. I have a tutorial on mushrooms, you know, mushrooms are pretty simple. It's just a, a frown upside down, right? <laughs> and then you want to kind of curve and connect that, right? Go down a little bit and start here and curve a line out and curve a line out. And then you curve the line in right here and here and here and then you can draw the little lines of the mushroom and the dots you know and then you can do different shapes the same the same premise different shapes right and leaves we talk about this all the time pretty simple simple and straightforward the acorns again frown upside down right and you're going to curve it in and curve it in and then you're going to connect it again and then you're going to kind of go out and then you're gonna go like this curve in like to a point and out and then you get the lines going like this and then for the like, oak leaf you know it's this wiggle wiggle down wiggle wiggle and you just connect them all right so that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna start off by drawing with our sharpie pen the elements that we have in the um, each little mini Monday, so the mushroom, you know, you can make the lines as thick and thin, break them up. It's gonna go pretty fast. See, I'm just redrawing it again. See, the different variety sizes of mushrooms. And I have some leaves here. Just some little veins. Right? And then we have the mushroom. We have all those little lines that connect the little mushroom guy. And then back here I have a leaf, leaves, and like a stem. I just draw a line down in the middle. Here I put some grass. I put another leaf down here and the grass. Just this. And then there's that fun, funky, tall kind of skinny mushroom. And there's some more grass, grass here. And I drew like a little stem with some berries over here. And I've got this curly Q kind of stem here going here with leaves coming off of that. You can do whatever you want. You could add more mushrooms, more stems, more leaves. Get creative. I've got the little white dots on this one. I'm probably going to be painting them mostly in anyway. So just drawing that in. And again, with the acorn, same thing. I showed you how to draw. It's the frown upside down with the curve. And then again over here. The little caps. They have like swimming caps on their heads, right? And they get the little lines. I'm really enjoying doing pen and ink wash. I'm going to go back to doing regular ones in a bit. I just like 
continuing this pen and ink thing, why not? <laughs> and we've got the oak leaf. And then the vein in the leaf. So put the veins right here. And we've got another one. Just kind of put that in there. And then once that's all drawn in, from my pencil lines that I had, I just take my gum eraser here, my kneaded eraser. And I erase all the little lines. This is, I like this eraser. I don't like to have shavings. <laughs> um, shavings are no fun. All right, I'm gonna stop painting. And basically, it's like almost like paint by number. You know, you're filling in the color, but not really. You know, you can add some tones to it. And I have my paints here. Um, we're working with all these colors. I have brilliant orange here. I don't know if I'll be using this one. Guanacanum magenta, Cabernet deep, peacock blue, burnt umber. Here I have neutral tint, which is a tint from Holbein. Here it is. That someone gave me, which is nice. Um, and then I have a little black wash here. Then I have my ultramarine blue and my Prussian blue. So obviously for this one, we'll be working with some browns. So I got the burnt umber here, and I'm gonna mix in. Over here, the same color, some black wash. Gouache. I do the water soluble gouache, not the acrylic gouache. Acrylic gouache is similar to acrylic paint. So you see how, how much darker that is? I might add a little yellow to this brown. There we go. That's more yellow, like wheat. I'll go back in and add this brown. So you want to figure out what two-tone browns you want for the acorn. You've got that light one, and we have the dark one, right? Can add a little of this dark to this. So I'm going to put the light one on the smaller, the inner part of the acorn here. Just kind of fill this in with my number six. You can leave a little white if you want. I should have left a little bigger white halo, but I didn't. I'm leaving one right there. See, I'm leaving a little white. And if you paint outside the lines, don't worry about it. At this point, if you wanted to bleed in a little darker color, you could on the edges. See, I'm just taking the tip of my brush, kind of bleeding in some of that darker color. See that? Now I've got that darker brown that I mixed up. I'm just kind of going over this one. This is a really simple painting on this one. Now you can keep the oak leaves in the brown tones, or you can change it, make it more red tones. It's a little bit darker. You're not really going to see the lines that much because it's darker. I'm leaving a little white just to give it a little fun, sketchy look to it. Nice and brown. So I think the leaves, I do like a cranberry. I don't want to do brown, 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 brown. So I've got the cadmium, I mean, sorry, quinacolor magenta, I'm adding some yellow in that reddish orange color. Or I can make an orange. Maybe I'm like an orange. How about that? And I'll add that orange over here and add a little more magenta. Video. Get a deeper orange tone. Add a little bit of the burnt umber. See, it's like a darker orange there. Oh, you didn't see that. Well, I did these two colors here to get this orange. And add a little bit of the burnt umber to get a little bit darker orange. Add a more red in this one. So here's the orange color. Gonna water this down just a bit more. Just filling this in. Now, I'm not going to put a color behind these elements. You can go right ahead if you feel like it. 
See how I'm just really loosely painting this in? Not fussing too much. And if it goes out of the lines, that's fine with me. It's all part of that sketchy kind of look I'm going for. And of course the stem back here should be brown. Now it's just this wash of orange. And I had that darker orange like I showed you. Let's go in and bleed some of that color under here. If you want it to be, it might be kind of like in the red band. I might add a little more yellow to my orange. I'm going to add a little more yellow in here. See, that just changes that. Put some more yellow in there. And I've got that deeper red orange. Going to bleed some of that color on the parts behind the acorn. The acorns are casting that shadow. And I'll go back in and I'll add some of this yellow. Just brighten up that. I think the orange is looking a little too dull. See, just right there, that's simple, 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 simple. If you want to go back in while it's dried a little bit and add a little darker shadow here and on the side here, the acorn. And the acorn, we thought this was really dark, but it dried pretty light. I'm going to go and add another wash of this deeper brown. See, it's on the bottom here and on the edge. Not fussing too much. A really kind of sketchy kind of look. And again, I still feel like back here it needs to have another shadow. I'm going to grab some brown, mix it in with that orange color. That red. See? Bleed that in. And then behind here. It just stands out more. It just makes more sense too. See? I'm gonna get this nice little acorn. So I'm gonna put that guy aside. Moving on. The little mushy rooms. Now I want them to be red. So let me mix up these colors again. So I'm using Quinacridone magenta. This guy might be for brown. And the cadmium yellow deep to get my red. Keep mixing the two. Like I'll add more magenta until I get the red tone that I'm looking for. It's kind of like a cranberry. It's not like a really bright red. And a little yellow. Okay, I got the red tone that I'm looking for. I'm gonna put some more water in here because it's pretty dry. And I'm just gonna kind of wash it in here. Don't pay attention that the circles are going to be filled in here. We're going to, we can go back in with um, some gouache and make the white. Because you'll just go crazy trying to paint around <laughs> these things that you've created. You know, you went like that, you'd go nuts. I'm just going to wash in this color really quickly. Again, like we were painting on the acorns, just really simple, like kind of a fast moving. I think you can go a little fast. You um, get looser. So those two are going to be red. You can make this one red too, but I think I'm going to change it up and have this little. We have this leftover brown from the acorn. Let me water. Maybe I'll add a little more gray tone to it. So I'll add. I'll wash down some of this uh, black wash and make it more of a gray brown. Yeah. See. There we go. Prettier. <clears throat> a little bit darker on the top. On the side. Okay, and so for here, we've got this neutral tint over here, and I mixed it with the black wash. Get a nice gray tone. Let's put some, like, just on the side. And here, on the top. The side. I forgot to draw the lines in here. And then we draw it afterwards. It's not a big deal. Let's put 
put that same gray under here. Kind of keep it light. Just under here. Because it's more of a white stem. Now we can use the orange or brown for the leaves going behind it. Um, I'm going to take some of that cadmium yellow deep, mix it with that red that I had. Got this nice yellow orange kind of color. And that would be a nice tone to put on these leaves to keep it fall, fall feeling. Just filling these suckers in. And maybe do a nice bright, brighter yellow one down here. Ooh, that's a little too bright. So if that seems too bright, add a little brown tint to it. A little red, which I just did. And then you can make the other one. I would make them both yellow. Maybe the other one could be an orange tone or even brown. I'll do the brown. So change it up a little orangey brown kind of color. Okay, and then we're going to make some green. So we got my peacock blue here. I'll mix it with some yellow. Get a nice bright green. More yellow. It's nice limey green. Maybe add a little more peacock blue. Let's put that bright green in there. We can add some darker tone greens too, but see I'm just taking the brush and going like this. I even though I drew the grass in, I'm still gonna take the brush and use it. I can add more grass. There's a little leaf here I forgot. I'm gonna make that one an orange tone. Actually make it brown. And then we've got the leaf coming here, which would be darker green I want to do. So take that same green, I'm going to add some Prussian blue to it. And you've got a deeper green. And I'll add a little burnt umber, even darker, look at that. So you can just take the greens you already mixed and you can just add some colors to it and it just changes it. So I'm just going to fill in these leaves with the darker green. And if you missed areas that you didn't draw and you want to add more leaves, go right ahead and add them. Like that. Okay, I'm going to add one right there. And take that same green, you can kind of put in some darker tones of the grass. See? Let's fill that in. So you want to take a little more brown in this one. And then I'm going to wash it down. I always tap it on my paper towel. And I'm going to put a little green kind of here, like it's on the grass. Just like that. And I might add a little brown to that. Leave in a little brown. So it looks more of like a forest kind of ground. You get the green and the brown. And then the little berries, I'll go in and make those red. Just fill those in. Nice little red color to kind of balance this. Now that red kind of washed down, so we can go back in and add another wash of the red that we had. See so it got really kind of pink in it. Kind of adding another layer. Same thing here. It's really simple. And then our little mushroom here guy. Need to add some color underneath. So I got that brown gray and I'm going to grab some more of that gray that I had and add just another wash of color here. See, I'm not filling the whole thing in. I'm just kind of on the side, a little bit down on the side here and then the bottom. Maybe do some little dots with that color. It just seems more like a natural kind of way it would look. And I'll take a little bit of that darker brown and I'll bleed it right here underneath the so shadow. And a little bit here with that gray. Again, 
Now, this guy, I forgot the lines. I could just go back in and draw those lines. Fix that. And this part of the stem, I should add a little gray tone to it. It's behind those leaves. I can add the whole thing kind of browner. See? It wouldn't really be white. Now, this is the part where you're just kind of tweaking. You're adding, you want to add more elements, more leaves. You want to add uh, another shade. So I've got that orange leaf here. I might add another deeper shade on the side. You know, you're just tweaking it. This leaf here. And then the yellow. I'll add a little bit of orange to that yellow. Just change that a little bit. So when that dries, that's pretty much still wet, but I'm going to go and add a little more of this neutral tint under here on the back side of the mushroom, which I didn't do. And kind of down where it's behind that leaf. Just get a little bit darker. And then here also. But we're not going to fuss with it too much. So now I think it's pretty much done if you don't want to do anything else to it. But I, of course, am going to be crazy and do that. This, I talk about this all the time. Be very careful when you're using the fountain ink. Because <laughs> it can splatter and I've shown it on camera where I've done that. So I'm just going to add some of this because you get thick and thin lines playing around. I'll add like an outer line like I did with the apple tutorial. Gives it kind of like a movement feel. See? Little outer lines. Little scrapes. It just changes the design a little bit. So you have thin and thick lines. You can just paint the whole thing and then do this. Um, I find it easier sometimes to do it the opposite way. I'm moving the picture around. Just makes it easier to control. Remember, be very, very careful with this. Because once it's down, it's difficult. Don't paint anything until it's, comp well, even if it's completely dry, it, you know, water will activate it big time and it will just bleed. So you want to make sure you kind of finish everything you need to do before you put this ink down. It's just another tool to just a uh, little lines inside the acorn, outside the acorn. Is that really kind of cool sketchy effect? See, just a little lines. Outside the acorn. Voila! I kind of like that. It feels like I'm moving around, right? This guy, I got to be a little careful because some of the stuff is still wet. So I'm just going to go in areas I think are dry. I don't want this ink to bleed too much. And then we could add the white gouache dots for the mushrooms and then we're done. I'm just going to go in here in certain spots and add those thicker lines. Play around with where they go. Going to add little dots just with the ink alone. You know, out here. Got those leaves, and again, you can add some marks next to the leaves, and then movement, movement. It's just going to change your design a little bit, make it fresh and interesting. Don't be afraid to, you know, mix things with watercolor. And those little lines. I don't want to fuss with this too much because this one's a little more delicate than the acorn one. I don't want to wreck it. But again, put some of these little lines out here. Voila. Okay, so we finished that. And then we'll take our, our brush with our gouache. I got some white gouache here. Put some white gouache down. Oof. Mess. 
I don't know who those neat artists are. It's just not me. <laughs> okay, this one I guess I'll use a number four brush, but you don't have to use a number four. You can use whatever brush is small enough for you to con control and put just enough water that you can move the paint around, not too much. And then we'll just do our little dots. Kind of bigger ones on top and tiny ones on the bottom. And the ones at top can be a little more closer together like I did there. And that's about it. And this is our Mini Monday tutorial. I can put some little white ones in here too. This changes it. So wasn't that fun? I thought it was a little fun. A little simple. Well, maybe not to everybody, but once you draw it, you're just painting it in like paint by number, and then you just go back in with the um, the, the fountain pen and just make those little marks. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Like I said, you know, if you're a Patreon member, you can download traceables. Just have fun with your watercolor. Use some other tools in your toolbox. Um, it just changes it up and makes it more interesting. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day and just relax. Don't stress about it. Just enjoy it. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.